Please welcome Sadhguru. That's it. That's it. <laughs> welcome. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Welcome to the show, sir. Don't mind if I cross my legs. My you brains don't work. You do whatever you like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are things? Well, well. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Thank you. I was just thinking about you when I was going over the, the story of your life and what you think your mission is. Like, do you, do you, the, the purpose. Everybody tries to find the purpose. <laughs> have you figured? Have you been able to articulate to yourself what it is? No, I don't have a purpose, and I think it's. Uh, it's unnecessary for each individual to have, create or invent their own purpose. Life has its purpose. Our business is to see how well we can fulfill that. That's what I like about what you talk about, because so much about anything that's spiritual or religion applies so much value to the self as opposed to just experience what's already it's, there. We are just a piece of life. Yeah. If this can become a full-fledged life, that's all there is. It's just that uh, because there is no sense of uh, balance and joy and peacefulness in people. People are trying to find a purpose mm -hmm. and always a God-given purpose. And uh, <laughs> what makes each individual think that uh, God is giving you a particular purpose? Right. It's a large creation, you know. Now, are you talking about is. consciousness or the physical purpose? Like in the way that an ant serves a purpose in the ecosystem, consciousness is our own thing. Consciousness is not our own thing. No, but I mean, in terms of like people sometimes, you know, you do your job as a physical being, mm -hmm. and that might be your job. What's the immediate purpose right now? <laughs> right, but that's it. So I'm, uh, do you think that, are you talking about just the physical being or are you talking about something else? So, so this is what, uh, when people are looking or when people are in pursuit of happiness, they're trying to do specific things that they like. If uh, your life is an expression of your joy, then you're not looking at what you can do, you're looking at what is needed and you do that well. Mm -hmm. I think that's everybody's business in this world. What is most needed right now, if we can do it joyfully, that's all there is. I want to fulfill my whim and you want to fulfill your whim and there's a whole lot of problem. We're doing a whole lot of unnecessary things on the planet <laughs> because <laughs> we're in pursuit of happiness rather than being an expression of joy. So when did that happen for you? When did it dawn on you that, or when did it come out of you, that this is how we should view the world? Uh, you know, I was, uh, this is almost a little over 30 years ago, and uh, I was very actively engaged in business and very successful with what I'm doing at a very early stage. When you're super successful with what you're doing, everybody clapping their hands and Slowly you begin to think the planets are not going around the sun, it's going around you. Mm -hmm. So I'm in that state <laughs> where everything is working for you, you're young, life is going great. So one afternoon I went up this little hill. I did not even close my eyes, my eyes were still open. Till that moment, I always thought, this is me, this is somebody else. I have no issue with the somebody, but this is me, that's somebody. <clears throat> Suddenly, I did not know which is me and which is not me. I was sitting here, the rock on which I was sitting, the atmosphere around me, everything around me had just become me. That mm -hmm. sounds crazy. So I thought I lasted in this madness ten, fifteen minutes. When I opened my eyes about four and a half hours, when I came to my normal consciousness, about four and a half hours had passed. For the first time in my adult life, tears, me and tears were impossible. I was like that. Yeah. But tears to a point where my shirt is wet. I've always been peaceful and happy, that's not been an issue for me. But here I am, every cell in my body is bursting in ecstasy. Like literally my body is just, you know, spreading yeah. into thin air. So to the closest of my friends, when I came and said, something is happening to me, <laughs> the only questions that I got was, what did you drink? What did you pop? That's what I want to ask. <laughs> I, I don't recall, I don't respect. The only time I know someone who can lose four hours in 15 minutes, or vice versa, is if they're on something. <laughs> so out of respect, you were, you were sober? 100%. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and there was no context for me yeah. to tell me what this is. All I knew is 
I've hit a gold mine, I didn't want to lose it. So when your physical being says, okay, I'm checking out, it's over, the physical part, this version of it, and it scatters to be recollected by somebody else, are you still self-aware in your mind? Like, are you still, have you, do you remember these experiences? Are you transferring these experiences elsewhere? Uh, now you're asking what happens after death. Well, that's yeah, what you think, yes. Yeah. <laughs> There are some things you know best only by experience. <laughs> right. So meaning you don't know. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you died? To... I don't know what meanings uh, here it's happened in different ways. People think meditation is some kind of a relaxation process. Yeah. Meditation is a living death. If you can live and die at the same time, you're meditative because you have created a different space between you and your body, between you and your psychological structure. We had Deepak Chopra on the show. I asked him a question. You don't, uh, I'm going to ask you the same question, but <laughs> come warning. LSD or levitation, you've done both. Which is more fun? Actually, LSD was more fun. You're clapping for it. It was my first spiritual experience. <laughs> And that's the word I want to talk about, spirituality, right? It's this idea of spirituality. And so some people think spirituality is connected to another world. And what is spirituality to you? If your experience of life transcends the limitations of physical, that means you're spiritual. Mm -hmm. Spiritual does not mean looking up or looking down, because you really do not even know what's up and down. One thing, you're sitting on a round planet, you're not even on the North Pole mm -hmm. and it's spinning. If you look up, invariably you're looking up the wrong direction. Nowhere in this cosmos is it marked <laughs> this side up, okay? Right. Thanks for taking the time, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> website is eShiftFoundation.org for the website, eShiftFoundation.org. Sadhguru, everybody, we'll be right back.